the first question I wanted to ask is, why do you think it is that many of us who have these tools, we've been on the spiritual path for years, we've been practicing, um, we've been working with our mantras, meditation, yoga, prayer, and so forth. Why do you think it is that sometimes when we find ourselves in the midst of a very difficult or trying experience that we have trouble staying with the path. We kind of fall off. We're not able to show up to the best of our capabilities. Do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, well, it's, it's all in the mind. Hmm. It's all in the mind. And Your mind gets captivated by drama or by things in the outside world. And we can't pull it off. It's sticky. And we're too identified with the thoughts that are going uh, that, uh, that around the thing itself. And uh, we've got to uh, bring the identification from the thoughts to the to the to the to the to the watcher of the thoughts. And that, that give, brings you uh, away from the thoughts. And then you should watch them and, and um, then you, you, you perspective about the thought. So you get caught in the you got caught in your mind is the is the answer. So how would you suggest when we recognize that? How do we use these difficult times in our lives, whether it's drug addiction or loss or abuse, any any sort of difficult time? How can we use that as a vehicle for our awakening, the courage and love that is within us? Well... That was one thing I by pulling back to the witness and the witness is part of the 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 soul. Yeah. That's then you're then you're then you're you're yeah, identified with your soul yeah. and that's that's freedom. So it's, that's pulling back addiction. You you find the you witness the addiction. 
and then you are identified with your witness. Identi and so I, I, I'm a, I, a bhakti yogi. Uh, and so I use love, but this is uh, this is your thought or your thought of addiction or uh, uh, hard times. Uh, and you you say you you say what are we here? because it'll be fe feeling thick. And that will start, a, that, that starts, what am I doing here to go? Start here. And you're aiming for the soul and you start with, I am, I am loving awareness, I am loving awareness, I am loving awareness, I am loving awareness, I am loving awareness. Then you halfway down to the heart, stop using I am loving awareness, loving awareness, loving awareness, loving awareness. And when you're, when you're, um, when you're in a, when you're a heart and that get, gets you towards your heart, uh, the, the heart, chakra and but you'll and then that right the, from there you uh, you enter the soul land it's a, a different plane of consciousness. So, it's a veil that, that we pierce from the heart to the soul. And the soul It's love everywhere. And then when that there, you'll look back at your stuckness and you love your stuckness. <laughs> Because if you don't love your stuckness, you get get bruise your heart, bruise your bruise your soul. I believe I've heard you say before that when we are working with that I am loving awareness mantra that Anything that enters our field then at that point is love because it is in the presence of loving awareness. Maharaji said to me, Ramdas, love everybody. And I said, I, I, I can't do it. And then he said, love everybody. Which has 
to do with your soul. Your soul loves everybody. Everybody, everybody, our souls, and love, <clears throat> and our soul loves another soul. It's not, I love you, it's much more a unconditional love, unconditional love. The, the, the option of love. Okay. <laughs> So something that's coming up, this was not a question I intended on asking you, but it's something that's happening right now in this moment for me. And it happened actually the last time we talked as well. My heart just opens up and, and, and it feels almost overwhelmingly full of love, like it's almost too much to bear. And while you were just speaking... And I, I'm not over-romanticizing this at all. This is literally my experience. I felt like I wanted to cry, but not a crying of sadness, just a, a cry of love, of joy. Yeah. What is that? What is happening there? Well, I experienced that when I when Maharaji loved me. Because it's for the, that love, that feeling of love is something you have wanted and wanted and wanted. And here it is. And that's good. You cry, you're saying, I'm crying, I'm feeling at home. I'm feeling at home. And you can look at it. Are you, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. I can see you fine, yeah. Um, when, you're, when your soul, you contact your soul, From your, from your heart, all the all the, the emotional heart is activated. And it, it, it becomes unbearable, the emotion. And you leave it, leave the emotion behind. Then you go into the into the soul. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it just you you it's so much, so much. I'm home. You have to cry. 
crying is not sad, it's not happy, it's just crying. So how, I think part of that experience for me is, and I think many others maybe as well, is we have a lot of this deep-rooted pain from ways we have harmed others, ways others have harmed us. How, how can we find authentic forgiveness for ourselves. You have to love yourself. You have to love. In fact, the foundation of all this work is loving yourself. Loving yourself. Loving yourself as a soul. Judging mind up here. I'm no good. I've done evil things. That's all in your mind. Well, and you go to the heart. To the soul. The soul loves itself. And the soul is what you really are. You really are. Not your ego. Your ego is a, is a dream or is a, yeah, it's my own. Now, I was speaking earlier today before our call with Noah Levine, who is your friend, friend Stephen's son. Um, and we were talking about uh, God and, and atheism, and Noah calls himself a Buddhist atheist, um, which to each their own. Um, I side more with, and I said this to him in our conversation, what you've been saying about the soul and coming home to that place. But I know that there is a lot of the younger generation that is very cynical and that struggles with the idea of soul or God or beloved and tends to side with the atheistic side or some of, uh, not just atheism, but the, the elements of Buddhism where they leave God out of it. What would you say to those younger people who are struggling 
with the idea of being a soul, or that there is such a thing as a soul. The problem is that, that soul has a, such such uh, such meaning in, in this culture, mm. and I tell them I. Tell them that all of it is words, and you can get to the to the to realization from many paths. Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism. Uh, and these paths have different methods. They are methods. And when you I am an atheist. I don't believe in anything. That's all of mine. Mm. Belief is not faith. Belief and faith. Belief and faith. Mm. And just tell them go into their imagination and you can imagine a god or a soul and feel that love because they don't they don't they just They want love. They want love. And the uh, this, this, they, they're caught in their mind, in the conceptual mind. No. So go into the experience. Yeah. I love you, you're a, you are a soul, beautiful soul. Uh, well, I love you dearly, and you are a beautiful soul. Uh. <laughs> I wanted to read a quote from a talk you gave. I love this quote. It's, it's a, a few sentences. It was from, I believe, 1989 Summer Retreats, um, possibly titled The Listening Heart, Selfhood, Spirit, and Personality. And the quote is that you said, there are many stages of the process of transformation there is a stage where you feel something in you that is behind your social facade and your social relationships to people. You feel a somebody-ness, which we call soul, like you feel an entity. 
then as you get deeper into the transformative work, that thing starts to dissolve. There's no self. There's no one. Then you see that there are just processes going on. There's nobody there. There's just these processes going on. And then the question is, how do you incorporate that understanding into existence? How do you live with no continuity? And so that's such a powerful quote. And I would love if you could elaborate a little and, and possibly answer that question is how do we incorporate that understanding into our existence? Living life is is one level of consciousness. And and The soul is one level of consciousness. And the one is another level of consciousness. If you continue to go from your soul to the one, you're, start, you're starting the vehicle of, of of your soul and it's like di diving into the ocean and you're you're on the shore and you you leave your shoes behind and your 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 self behind and then go diving into the ocean. In the ocean, you're you're a wave. You're a wave. And your wave is part of the ocean. And it's a separate wave. But you've got to be a subtle, a subtle understanding. Mm -hmm. And But the one, the one will have no difficulty in life because the one shows panorama, your whole, your whole, your whole life and then incarnations from the past and, and, and understanding the karma of your soul. And that that's I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this life to, to learn, to learn things which, which will erase the karma. And that's that's perspective. You've got to shift perspective. And so that and, uh, the one the 
one has all these perspectives. Uh, like I, I was with Maharaji, and I would, I would, uh, I would go from Seoul, from uh, from plane of consciousness to plane of consciousness. And he was always there. Every thing, he, he was there. Because he was the one. So that what's that's that's in store for us. So I saw recently a picture posted and you have an updated photo added to your puja table of Mr. Donald Trump. Mm. And it was just funny timing because I saw that as I was, you know, thinking about earlier that day, compassion and cultivating greater compassion for others. So, how do we cultivate sincere, authentic compassion for other people? How can we go deeper into that in a way that is very real? Well, Mr. Trump will take as an example. We've had trouble with Mr. Trump um, have, we've only had from his incarnation. That's the only thing we've got to work with. <clears throat> but if we perspective change that there was there there was there there is a soul who has a, a terrible incarnation and the compassion in our hearts for that soul to have such a such a an incarnation, mm. so I have compassion for for the soul. that has karma that leads to in this incarnation. Poor soul. Poor, poor soul. Poor, poor soul. He's going to have. He's going to come up in this. Yes. <laughs> Something I found myself doing with him that seemed to help because he can really get under my skin in a way that makes me feel very uncomfortable. But I, I looked at him, I looked deeper than the man I was seeing, and I looked at him as though I was looking at 
a seven-year-old boy, a wounded seven-year-old child, and the body of an, an adult man, and those wounds just coming out in different ways. And for me, that helped bring compassion to the situation. I, you know, as, as his mouth kept going, I felt my fists <laughs> still tightening a little bit. But it helped bring softness to the situation. That's good. That's and, good. And I appreciate your perspective on soul as well to understand that that's how it's playing out for him. And like you said, he will surely have his comeuppance. <laughs> and, that, and that's his incarnation. Hmm. Yeah. Seven-year-old boy. He, that's a, an incarnation. Mm -hmm. So just a couple of more questions for you. Um, I think I might have asked this uh, the last time we spoke several years ago, but I do a lot of work with the younger generation and I'm very passionate about that work. A lot of people that are finding their way through addictions or abuses and things of that nature and um, start dipping their toe in the pool of spirituality. As I said before, there is a lot of cynicism that comes along with them when they do that because of their life experience up to that point. And to a certain extent, I think that that can be healthy, but it seems to oftentimes go pretty far over what I would consider healthy, almost to the point of closing them off a bit. So for the person that is new to the spiritual path, new to their exploration, is there any advice you would offer, any thoughts that you would like to share with them? as they really step onto the path and embark on a journey, whatever that may look like for them? Nice. The stepping stones for this journey is within, within, within each of, each, each of us. Don't keep going outside for gratification, inside for gratification, inside is your guru, your god, anything, all those names. Your strength, your strength is all your intuition. Your voice from within. And if you can't trust that, where are you? Where are you? Mm -hmm. 
You're a strength. Your strength is not on your thinking mind. That your strength is your spirit. Your spiritual self. That's got strength immeasurable you might find yourself in a predicament in your life all you gotta do is go with inside I had a stroke. It's a brain thing. And I just went inside. Jim. Save myself. I have a girl. You have a girl too. in India or anything. Uh, uh, a guide. Or a, a, a companion in your life. And he'll remind you what you are and where to look inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you can only Contact this and that, this, this, this being only here in He comes into your imagination. He'll, he'll meet you in your imagination. You don't have to be imagination. Wow. is healthy. healthy. Just go into it. So I have one final question. I 
personally have struggled with drugs and alcohol in my life. And like I said, a lot of the work I do is people is with people who have, and not just that, but depression, self-cutting, self-harm. Um, and I am no stranger to relapsing, where I will be in recovery for a while and then go back and pick up drugs or alcohol, knowing full well the damage that they have, not just on me physically, but mentally and emotionally and spiritually as well. And I see many people that struggle with that. What what can we do to protect ourselves from going back to those destructive behavior patterns? Is there something we can do? Stay in the present. Stay in the present moment. You were just saying they were going back. So those things. You You and I are in present. I don't feel you as me or alcohol. No. But you do. Your 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 brain is 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 there, is back there. Mm-hmm. So now you are you are somebody who's had experiences. That's now you're you you want to get into the light. That's how you are at this part moment. I want to be out of this. Wow. And what I then past, past, past. Don't even think of the past. You know you you don't you see you have a model it's is creeping in the past is creeping up and you gotta keep focused on it. Past is past. Past is past. I know the traumatic things in the past. Wow. You're a new person every moment, every moment, just now, just now, just now, just now. Don't the thoughts of the past or the future, just the, their thoughts, their thoughts. That's all those, those addictions and the thoughts. They're not, 
they're not little dogs or cats around, you know. They're really, they're not, they're not real. And those thoughts, you love them. You love them just to, to keep them. You're, you're, you love them to love them to death. God. Yeah, yeah, those thoughts oh how am I what am I doing here? It feels awfully. Ugh. What am I doing here? I can find that I'm witnessing. I'm witnessing. Witnessing. From the soul. That 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 addiction is a manifestation from from karma, from karma. But now I'm a new person. Namaste. Oh, namaste. Thank you for your time. Bye. Bye.